uh, Nakai Hill Green is a player that the coaches just rave about, and I think it's a matter of time before he starts making, you know, big plays on the defense. <laughs> The high hill green, the high hill green. Maybe he will be somebody that we will identify today as one of the five most important Wolverines. Welcome in and thanks for joining us here today. Michigan football today. Maize and blue reviews of Michigan football, basketball today. We're here live weekdays at one o'clock talking about the latest in Michigan sports, we're not going to play around a lot today. We're going to get right to it, and we've got big quarterback news to get to. Uh, and it kind of affects the uh, the Wolverines. We do have the NBA draft coming up uh, tonight. We'll uh, discuss how that will affect the uh, maize and blue and the red, white, and blue, the Pistons, who own the fifth overall pick. We're going to start with the five most important Wolverine, Michigan Wolverine football players. We have the call-in number scrolling on the bottom of the screen. We also have it uh, up on the screen in big letters right now. Uh, remember it if it's uh, um, if you're listening on the podcast and wanted to get in, uh, you can. Uh, yet yeah, obviously we have to be live if you're listening to this after one o'clock. You know, calling this up is not going to do any good. But eight one zero triple six fifteen seventy four. That is the number for you if you ever want to get in. Talk a little Michigan football with us. Well, today we are going to start with those top five most important Michigan football players, and we'll get to those NBA draft thoughts, and we've got that big quarterback news to address as well. The uh, The thing about the most important players is that the first time I did this, you know, I think of different things to talk about. I Okay, well, I'm going to go with this guy. And then I started talking. With uh, with Jim Scarcelli, who usually does join us on Thursdays, he joined us on Tuesdays this week, and Scar started listing five different guys to me, and then I thought, is this the the best players are, are on the Michigan football team? Not necessarily. I mean that that could be a different conversation. Uh, to me, the most important ones. There's some guys that are are givens. Like even I I, I thought about putting the Michigan transfer at center, number 55, Aluskin Oluwatimi. Big time uh, shoes to fill with, um, you know, last year's uh, departure of uh, Andrew Vastardis. And, you know, the the center is going to make everything go with a a potentially high-octane offense. But to me, and it's important, and it's important that they all work together and all that kind of stuff, but uh, Oluwatimi was one of the top three centers in college football last year. And by all accounts, you know, you listen to the players talk about him. Yeah, he's important, but he's like a given. So you could say, well, these are the players that are go- that are potentially going to play prominent roles for the Wolverines. And if they do, and if they fill those roles, it is going to be really important uh, for this Michigan football team. And they could be off and flying uh, the picture, if you're watching on on video, uh, Cade McNamara was it uh, just recently when Michigan uh, gave out their rings at the big house. Uh, McNamara acted like he was eating his championship ring. I took a screenshot of it, and there it is on on the screen with uh, with Cade McNamara. All right, without further ado, let's get to those top five most important Michigan football players for 22. Uh, let's uh, go with uh, the order from five to one. And at number five, I went with Chris Jenkins. Now, Chris Jenkins, if you're a Michigan fan, you know, you'll be familiar uh, with his dad. And, you know, it, I have Jenkins here. Mozzie Smith, a known commodity. At defensive tackle, you know, Jenkins, you could put him out there at one of the defensive ends. You could put him in there, defensive tackle, and those inside. You know, you figure he's going to put on some weight. But if you could tell me that that Chris Jenkins is going to be the starter and play next to Mozzie Smith, very important when you're thinking about the middle of your defense. And Jenkins, I have him at number five for most important, at number 94 in your program, Chris. Jenkins, the sophomore. At uh, number four, 
most important Michigan football players for 22. I went with a linebacker, number 41, Nakai Hill Green. You heard Doug Karsh talking about him at the beginning of the broadcast. Doug joining us uh, yesterday. And I asked him to identify a player. I went through like, hey, Mozzie Smith next to uh, Junior Colson, you know, went through the different levels of the defense. And he identified Nakai Hill Green as somebody who the coaches are talking about. I have uh, NHG as the fourth important uh, player for Michigan for the upcoming season. That gets us to number three. And I picked Jalen Harrell, number 32. Now, Harrell played a lot, and in some games, he took more snaps than David Ajabo. But when you talk about Michigan and this year, one of the first things uh, and it could be the very, it could be the number one thing that you talk about. You wouldn't get much of an argument when somebody says, "What do you think about Michigan?" Somebody's gonna say, uh, "How are they going to replace uh, the aforementioned uh, Ajabo and Aiden Hutchinson?" Well, Jalen Harrell uh, is very important. Stands up against the run, but look at him. You know, he, he's uh, when you watch him play, it's not like uh, yeah. So he's a defensive end, outside linebacker, rush end. That was very good against the run. But when you look at him, it's not like he looks like he's some giant defensive end that that can't get up the field. He looks like an outside linebacker. Very important to be able to fill those shoes and to get some of that production. I think Harold could be the one that we're sleeping on the most in this Michigan defense, number 32. And we've already seen him a lot. And you know, thinking about getting him in there and replacing. Uh, the big two from last year, pretty big deal. Now it gets us to the second most important Michigan football player for 22. And I went to the safety position. Rod Moore played a lot last year. Jordan, now they don't have Dax Hill and you could make a case for Makari page. Jordan Morant is going to be that guy initially. And it's the one thing that Michigan is afforded with that we all know as well is that they've got the, the three warm-up games. So if there's going to be chance for, just like at quarterback, when we all talk about how the snaps are going to be divvied up, you're going to be able to play a lot of different uh, uh, players at safety and get a chance. Uh, but Morant, I think the one here, Rod Moore and Jordan Morant, I have uh, JM as um, number 31 as the second most important Michigan football player for 22. That leaves us with number one. And here he is, Mike Morris. Now, Mike Morris, number 90, has done, you could say, well, Morris is one that you've seen. And Jim Harbaugh talked about, you know, when, when Harbaugh was talking about, he was asked the specific question about replacing those two guys. He said, you know, this defense is going to be scary. He said, you know, it's scary good. And then he said, Mike Morris, first name out of his mouth. Morris and Harold, no coincidence that these two, maybe they should be one, two, but, you know, I haven't won three. But Mike Morris, he's been singled out. Uh, we've seen a little bit of him there. And they're going to really rely on him to get that pressure and to get upfield and really, you know, be that rush end in this defense. I have Mike Morris as uh, number one when it comes to Michigan and their five most important players for 22. If you're listening to the pod, Morris, one, Morant, two, Harrell, three, Hill Green, four, Jenkins, number five. All right. Next screen gets us to the NBA draft, which is tonight. You probably know. And you also probably know that Michigan has two players that played for them last year, two five-star recruits that well, we can, and we did. We went over and talked about their seasons a number of times and ultimately their decisions to stay in the NBA draft. Now, for me, I think that both of these guys jumped after their freshman year, not that because they're going to be picked in the first round. Maybe they think they are going to be. I'm, I'm, I, I'm sure that they hope that they are going to be. But both of these guys were not able to collect any name, image, and likeness money. 
there are some players in college basketball, like the player of the year that's going back to Kentucky, Shibway. He's uh, been able to cash in a little bit on uh, NIL. But I don't know the, the different hoops that you have to jump through and if that's something that they would have been allowed to do, if Michigan could have helped them in that area. I don't know, but I think that that – is one of the big factors with these two. If it was just like they have to be first round picks and that's why they're going, well, then they made bad decisions. I don't think either of these guys' names are going to be called tonight in the first round. It's one of those things like I'm not down on either of these guys. Uh, I was excited that they came in, that Juwan Howard was able to go out there and, uh, and, and get him in. And what we have seen, uh, you know, you see in recruiting, you know, you can get very excited to get very highly ranked players. Caleb Houston was a top 10 player, specifically number eight overall. Uh, and when he came in, Diabati was top 25 and Michigan was number one in basketball recruiting for much of the year. So they were passed late by Memphis and Duke. I think Diabati and Caleb Houston are ticketed for the second round at best. I would be the pretty, you know, I don't know if shocked because could a team, you start looking at some of the other names and, you know, there's some guys there you could say, hey, these guys have some holes in their game too. And and these guys do have some upside. Now, the thing when I uh, when I think of Caleb Houston, if I just watch Caleb Houston shoot the basketball, the, the shot coming off of his hand and the, the form and the arc, it looks really good. I mean, he's got, it looks like, man, that's a sweet looking shot. It just didn't go in enough for him this year for Michigan. And, you know, can you expect? I would have, if he would have come back to Michigan, I would have expected a big jump in his uh, his outside shooting percentage. And can he now take that to the NBA and extend his range? And, and I don't think right away. I think the other things that, uh, other things that NBA teams are going to look at and why he will not get taken in the first round is that he doesn't create his own shot. I mean, he's a set shooter. Now, he's listed at six foot eight, but has a pretty good reach. So he might be 6'10, even 6'11 when you talk about his wingspan. And there are plenty of players that make their living now in the NBA by just standing out on the three point line and cranking up threes. And Caleb Houston could be one of those guys. And it's the most desired position right now in the NBA outside volume shooters three-point shooters, and Houston has that. But I think because uh, because he was overall disappointing, you know, at Michigan, being able to shoot the ball. And then, you know, he's a stationary shooter. So, But there's there's a lot of these guys, you know, that, that have made their way in the NBA. So I do think he'll get picked, but likely in the, in the second round. And when it comes to Diabate, you know, he can't really shoot from outside at all. And his shot doesn't really look, you know, when you, the, the opposite of Houston, when I say, you know, you watch Houston shoot, man, it comes off his hands, the rotation, man, that thing looks good. Diapodes don't, you know, his, his shot looks pretty broke, but you know, he's young and he's got a lot of upside and there have been like, if you just put a highlight reel tape together of Diabate, you have a couple sequences, sequences from the year where you watch him and you say, wow, this guy looks like, you know, he's got NBA written all over him. Look at that steal. Look at him on the floor. Look at the dunk. I mean, his athletic ability is off the charts. So when you have that going for you, uh, he, uh, he's got a lot of NBA stuff going for him. And the, is it the easiest thing? I think being able to develop an outside shot is the easiest thing when you have all of the other things that Diabate has, you know, the height, the length, the athletic ability, the jump, all of the stuff. Uh, he's got all of that. Remember Magic Johnson couldn't hit the broad side of a barn when he came in, you know, one of the greatest players of all time developed. I don't think Diabate uh, compares at all to Magic Johnson. The only comparison there is that, you know, Magic wasn't a very good outside shooter uh, coming out of uh, Michigan state. And you can develop that. That is the point when it comes down to uh, Diabati. If I had to put money down on where these guys would pick, I put an over and under on Maize and Blue Review on the Den at 35 and a half for Diabate. And then I put the over and under on Houston at 40 and a half. So I don't think either of these guys are going to be picked in the first round. 
I have seen some odds about Houston being selected. I think plus 375 maybe for Houston being picked in the first round, one of those gambling sites. But, um, and yeah, there's, there's, you know, we've all checked the different mock drafts over the last month or two. And at times, you know, Houston's name did pop up. I don't know if uh, Diabati's ever popped up in the first round, but I actually think Diabati will get selected before Houston, you know, even though Houston plays the coveted position, but that's me. We'll see uh, how it ends up uh, working out. LTM saying Caleb can shoot his way on the court. He needs to just get hot. LTM uh, saying that Musa needed to come back. Yeah, like you can make a case that they needed to come back. If they get a chance to go in the second round, they can develop in the G League and they get paid a little bit. Can you make the case that you know, being chartered around and uh, treated like a movie star, like they are in Division One, when you're a top 25 team, like those guys, uh, is a better life than you know, driving buses in the G League, you know, from place to place, and you know that kind of stuff. Maybe flying commercial. I don't know exactly what it's like being uh, in the G League, but uh, that's um, a conversation that we had for the last few months. They're in. They're waiting and they will see. Now, I don't think they're going to get picked, but in the first round. But if Houston, the one thing he does have going for him, a number of times when you've heard Jawan Howard talk about him, he has gone out of his way to talk about the work ethic that Caleb Houston has. That's good. Like you didn't want to hear, like, yeah, you know what, the guy just didn't, you know, just didn't work all that hard. Uh, it's the opposite. You know, he's got a good work ethic. So, uh, and, and he does have the, the game uh, that they're looking for in the NBA. You know, as Michigan fans, it's weird. I, I see a lot of graphs and everything put up on Twitter about, hey, look at Michigan, how many first-rounders they've produced in so many years. You know, they're up there with the Blue Bloods and everything else, which is true. I mean, it's a, a factual a type thing. You can look and, and see uh, these schools that have produced the most first-rounders over whatever, 10, 15, 20 years. Michigan is up there. So if you're a Michigan fan, you know, so I guess you would want them to get picked in the first round. You don't have anything against them. It didn't work out uh, at Michigan overall. I mean, they, they didn't, when you come in with, you know, those kind of expectations, you, you, you know, you expect a little bit more, but um, you know, it really worked out for them, obviously if they went in the first round and it would make Michigan uh, look good. Now you could say, make an argument that it would make Michigan look bad. Like, Hey, they got a guy that went in the first round and you know, this team, you know, uh, came down to the last game of the year to have to get into the NCAA tournament. You know, what the heck's going on? So, you know, it does cut both ways. We'll see how it plays out as always, but my prediction 35 in the second round for Diabate 40 for Caleb Houston. The breaking news that I mentioned, let's uh, get to that now. And it comes, let's hit the, the. Well, let me see here. Do I have a breaking news sounder? I think I do because I just put it in. All right, there it is. We have, one more time, breaking news. We have a commitment. It's not for Michigan. And normally we don't sit around and telling you about commitments for other teams. However, Arch Manning is one of the most heralded recruits ever. You may have heard of Arch Manning. He is the number one pro style quarterback by rivals uh, for, um, for next year, the 23 class. And he has committed just today. Just, I don't know, about an hour ago, a little over an hour ago, it became official. Arch Manning is headed to Texas. So the Longhorns are able to score Arch Manning. Uh, It's surprising, you know, when you think, uh, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Texas. I think the other thing that's a little bit of a surprise, if you go back to not the 22 class, but the 21 class, Quinn Ewers was the number one overall pro style quarterback. He ended up, what, getting uh, NIL money to go to Ohio State. I don't know, like a million dollars or something, maybe more than that. And then he transferred to Texas. 
and he is expected, uh, you know, it's not a sure thing, but he is expected to be the, the starting quarterback this year for Texas. That did not dissuade Arch Manning, the number one quarterback from 23 and 21. Uh, Quinn Ewers is uh, at Texas right now. So how do you do? Number one overall and number one overall in Arch Manning and Quinn Ewers. How about those Longhorns? How about Sark? Steve Sarkeesian with the the quarterbacks, the likes of Manning and Ewers. LTM. Caleb can shoot his way. That's not the feedback that I was looking for. Good pick with Texas. They will be in the SEC. I think, yeah, you're right. This year, even though Texas does play Alabama this year, I think they do matriculate next year into the SEC along with Oklahoma. So there it is. But the one thing about Arch Manning and this uh, 23 class is that he is now committed to the Longhorns Malachi Nelson is uh, all set to go play for Lincoln Riley and USC. He is the second ranked quarterback, a five star. And uh, he's staying right home in California. Nico Imavelia took the money. It's allowed. You know, I say that, and it sounds like something's going on. You know, it's okay to take the money. Imavelia took the money. And one from California to Tennessee, the five-star quarterback, Imavelia, is going to play for the Vols. Number four on this list is undecided, and it is Dante Moore from Michigan. Martin Luther King, 6'3", 199, undecided. The rest of the guys, you look in the top ten, um, there's one Rashada out of Pittsburgh who's uh, listed as a four star. But if we're just talking about the five stars, there's just four of them in the 23 class. And there's just one that's undecided and it is Dante Moore. Now Dante Moore hasn't officially said when he's going to make his selection, but he is um, on the move this weekend. I think he was at Texas a and last week. He's going to the Elite 11, which is, I believe, Tuesday, and that is in California. He is expected to go out to Oregon, and there has been some indication. I'm going to come back with a lot more news on Dante. It's going to be like a Dante Moore Friday. We'll come back and we'll we'll hammer out. Uh, we'll have, maybe we'll have more of the details. Maybe the details are out there, but I, I think Dante's got Michigan. In his plans again, before Tuesday or right around the Elite 11, which makes me think that there could be a decision forthcoming here for Dante Moore. One of those things that make me think so is that Arch Manning just popped, and and I don't know, now Moore's the one. And then Moore, going to take a quick peek at Oregon. I think again, he's been out there. And then... The good part is he still has Michigan in the plans there. Is it just to come on in and say, hey, guys, thanks, but, you know, Phil Knight's offering me $10 million. Come on. I don't know exactly what's going on with Aaron. I don't have the exact flights and the accommodations. I guess I don't have the itinerary uh, sitting here in hand for uh, for Dante Moore. But uh, Josh Henschke. And Zach Libby have been posting a lot about Dante Moore over the last 24, 48 hours, 72 hours. And, you know, it's like every five minutes, there's just a little another nugget on there. Dante Moore's doing this. Dante Moore's doing that. Elite 11, Oregon, Michigan, now Arch Manning. It's, uh, what do we say? What's the one gift? It's happening. It's happening. It, it could be happening. So, D. Moore is going to be a great pickup. Michigan needs this. That's from LTM. Now, LTM, Michigan does need it. And, you know, you always need a five-star quarterback. Most important position. He's at Michigan's own backyard. You know, C.J. Carr ended up going to Notre Dame. Michigan, if they were able to get Dante Moore, 
you know, what it would mean to me is that if you're paying attention to what is being said about name, image, and likeness, there are a lot of schools, whether it's uh, Miami, I just mentioned uh, Tennessee, and Louisville. A team like Louisville is pulling in top 100 players, I want to say left and right. And guys, you know, and they're not getting them from Kentucky. They're going down to Florida. They're going out to California. They're going down to Texas. I mean, and they're getting these top 100 players. Now, they are allowed to you know, so go out there. And now they're not supposed to be uh, guarantees or inducements. But right now, uh, you can come on in and say, look, you have the opportunity, wink, wink, you know, to make $6 million. I'm Ali of Aliel, like, uh, you know, Tennessee has indicated. And so if Dante Moore went to Texas A&M and now he's going up to Oregon, you get the Nike money, you get the oil money from, from Texas A&M. And, you know, those teams were playing fast and loose before name, image, and likeness. If Michigan scores Dante Moore, it will be one of the greatest uh, recruiting gets ever for the maize and blue. And it really will answer every question that you've had about name, image, and likeness. And there are a lot of people, I say piling on, but they're just looking at how other teams are doing it. They're saying, look, Michigan's out here saying, no, we're not playing that game. We're not talking about, sal-. you know, Harbaugh's mentioned a salary cap. Harbaugh's mentioned, you know, the his famous now, say famous, infamous, his line about name, image, and likeness is that Michigan is transformational, not transactional. I've heard him use that at least three times. Once was uh, a podcast, I don't remember, just over the last week, he used it again. He used it out at Ferris State at that camp. And prior to that camp, I don't know who he was talking to or when he said it, but he 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 floated out there the Michigan's transformational, not transactional. And you have people across, you know, social media and at other schools laughing like, hey, everybody else is peeling off those $100 bills and uh, Harbaugh's talking about come on in for the experience. Now, I think Harbaugh could be saying one thing and behind the scenes, it's completely different. And if you're a Michigan fan, that's what you hope. Well, yeah, Harbaugh's all talking school, school, school. And that's what the coach is supposed to be doing. And yet guys behind the scenes could be doing all that other stuff uh, and getting involved, whether you want to say their hands are dirty, they're the money man, they're whatever else. Uh, it's where college football is at right now. But it will answer the question. Michigan will come out looking like and Harbaugh will look like a genius and uh, they will have answered the question. Because one thing for sure is that Right now, if you're a quarterback and you're a five-star quarterback like any of these guys that I've just mentioned, Manning, Nelson, I'm Avelia. I mean, I'm Avelia was rumored to get six million for Tennessee. I'm not kidding. Six. Nelson going with Lincoln Riley, they paid him over. Like, what how would they pay him to go to uh, USC? A hundred million or something as a coach? They're paying Malachi Nelson. Texas. Everything's bigger down there. What do you think Arch Manning is getting to go down to Texas? Five? I mean, would it surprise you if Arch Manning gets $10 million? I know it's, it sounds, it does sound crazy saying um, $10 million. Oh, this is a great, you know, I'm looking up here. DJ Johns says Jordan Morant has transferred. And as you say that, I look up to the screen and I look at my transfer board and I have big red boxes on my transfer board. And Jordan Morant has a big red box. Now I was filling it out, the opposite safety at Rod Moore. That should say Makari Page. As number one, DJ, you are the man. And I do appreciate that. And now that you say it, like I'm looking at that and you say transferred and you're exactly right. Uh, Great job. Thanks for the catch. And, and why, when I was putting that together, was I thinking that my, the orange box indicated a starter, but now that you say it and it's crystal clear, you're on top of it. So I do appreciate that. Great job. And you come in at the buzzer to be able to get it done, to make at least to get the correction. Let's use the, the breaking news. 
you're right. Morant is gone. He has transferred. So that number one, that even makes the the opposite safety to more more important. I've got Page, or should should have been said R.J. Moten, Page or Moten. Maybe that's where. So I did screw up on that. The screw up is. Is it more, is Moten and Morant twisted me up? And should it be Page or Moten as the number one guy? I'm going to think on that. Okay. Number one guy transferred out. That doesn't make me look good. But I appreciate the catch. Coming up. On tomorrow's show, we'll talk about what happens uh, in the NBA. And uh, as always, check us out on all of the social platforms, the podcast, everywhere you find it, and Summertime with Amazing Blue. You want to know where Dante Moore is going? You want to know who's transferring in and out? Join Amazing Blue Review today. Go to michigan.rivals.com. We will talk with you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye.